Welcome to Public Church. My name is Alex. And I'm Nathan. We are so excited that you're with us. We hope that this encourages you and it challenges you right where you're at. We know that this is a a season and time that we've never faced before, but today we're praying that every one of us would experience the hope and the peace that Jesus offers. So before we get into anything, we just want to pray for that peace and hope today over everyone who's watching this right where you're at. So let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can connect from a distance with each other, Lord. We pray that in this gathering that you would open our hearts to experience you and your love and your hope and your peace that you offer for us today. I pray that that we would be encouraged by your word, we'd be challenged, and that we would just lift your name up today through this worship. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to stay connected with you during this time, and one of the best ways to do that is through our social media accounts. So you can connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our public church app. We're also encouraging our community groups to stay connected through Slack, Zoom, and texting. If you're not a part of a community group, now is the time to join, and you can find those community groups on the public church app. And another way that we want to stay connected through this time is by serving as a family, especially to those in our neighborhood, in the streets, right around our campus here at Public Church. And one thing that we actually did this past week was we we went out and, and distributed some care packages to some of our close neighbors just to let them know we're, we're praying for them and thinking about them during this time and to show them a way that they can reach out to us if they're in need. And, you know, we're going to keep serving because that's what we want to be as a public church is serving our neighbors. And if you're interested in getting involved in that and finding out more, you can reach out to us by sending an email to katie at publicchurch.com. We also want to make you aware of some of our upcoming plans. For now, these events are postponed. That would be Unified, our Team Award Night, and Family Covenant. We will let you know when those are rescheduled. And now we want to enter into a time of worship through our giving. And You know, when you give, it actually helps us stay connected the way that we're doing today, and it helps us serve our neighbors around us. And so there's a couple ways that you can give. If you want to write a check, you can mail that to Public Church at 850 17th Street Northwest, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. Or if you want to give digitally, you can download the Public Church app, give through PushPay by hitting give in the bottom right-hand corner. And so as we are about to, to worship with each other, we just ask that you would just, just really engage uh, with public worship as they lead us in a couple of songs and just let God speak to you through this time. Possibility remains no longer when you speak 
God after your final breath it wasn't over yet you were still God and you are still God before the world began it wasn't spoken yet you were still God and you are still we know that you're a God over everything, that you're a God over every situation, you're a God of this pandemic, you're a God over loneliness and isolation that many people are feeling right now, Father. So we just speak your hope, your light into the situation, into this room, into living rooms across this city right now, Jesus. We know that you're good. Help us to be a light in the darkness for the glory of your name, Jesus. There's a grace when the God is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning Another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need me, my power set me free. There is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another. Dead left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between where I used to be and this reckoning? Either way, I'm about to the things of this world. Cause I know. Another in the fire, standing next to me. There is another in the 
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and to be through it all. Yeah. So come what may in the space between all the things that seem and this reckoning. Alex and Nathan did a great job hosting us, and I am so grateful for public worship, bringing those songs into our homes. That last chorus, All We Need Is You, what a great reminder that Jesus is all we need. And my name is Todd, if we haven't met, and thank you for inviting me into your home. And whether you follow Jesus or not, Public Church wants to come alongside you as we navigate these uncharted waters. Jesus followers, we want to encourage and challenge all of us to be a public church who worships, connects, and serves wherever we are. Look, we love coming together physically, but we are the church wherever we are, so we want to help all of us live that out. And if you don't follow Jesus, we want you to know that Jesus is our hope in this season and in every season. So we invite you to embrace the journey of following Jesus. I think our Flourish team that serves our ladies really says it well. We are better together. And so we need each other as we navigate these, this season. And we've already seen the benefits of coming together. In fact, this week, we had an incredible opportunity to serve our neighbors, like as in the people that live right across the street from Public Church's campus. And what we saw was you guys show up in a big way. 
we had a drop off from 12 to four where people could drop off um, non-perishables and cleaning supplies. And when 12 o'clock came around, you guys were lined up. Like we had people lined up and waiting to give. Come on, that is a public church. And, and think about the way that we were able to become love displayed to our neighborhood. So let's journey together. Let's serve together because we are better together in this season. And to get us rolling into our discussion today, I just want to ask a question. And it's this, during COVID-19, what do you see? In the midst of this global pandemic, like what do you and what do I see? The reality is we don't see everything that is visible. Perhaps you've heard of the frequency illusion or the bider meinhof phenomenon. It means this, some, once something has been brought to our attention, we see it seemingly everywhere. You may have experienced this if you've ever tried to purchase a car and you find that car and you're like, man, this is unique. I don't see this car much. I don't see this color. And you buy it. And then for the next month, all you see is that car. It's everywhere. The same color, different colors. That model is everywhere. It's the frequency illusion. Or to illustrate further, if you watched either of our first two videos that have been filmed in our living room, you may have noticed this sign. It is well with my soul. And you may be wondering, why has it changed locations? Or if you didn't recognize that, now you're like, the sun keeps moving. Why is it moving? The reality is I'd been procrastinating, hanging up some pictures, and Whitney, my wife, leveraged this filming to get me to hang up some pictures. So for the first film, we put it there, and then afterwards we said, ah, we actually like the family photo there, and so we moved it back to the mantle. And for this film, we said, well, let's try them both together. And if we film more, the next time you're in my living room, it may be somewhere else. <laughs> but now, because we've pointed it out, you're probably going to be looking for it where some of you didn't notice it before. It is the frequency illusion. We don't see everything that is visible, but when things are pointed out, we see them all the time. So a vital question for us to ask in this season is what do we see? Because what we see has a big influence on our levels of anxiety or peace, our levels of fear, or confidence. And so we're going to look at a story in, in John, which is an eyewitness account of Jesus's life. And Jesus sees something that no one else does. And what he wants to do through this story is he wants to open our eyes to see some things that I know I've been missing and I don't think I'm alone. So if you want to turn in your Bible or Bible app to John chapter 6, as I said, this is the eyewitness account of Jesus's life written by John. John was a disciple and a very close friend of Jesus. And the thing about this story is for a whole lot of you guys, it's going to be really familiar. And when we get to familiar stories, I know it's easy for me to roll my eyes, here we go again, and kind of tune out. Hey, I just want to encourage us all to lean in. As I've been studying this, like it has come to life in fresh ways for me. And, and I pray that it would be fresh and that Jesus would show us some things that we've missed before for you as well. And for those of you who may not have ever heard this story, you just have an advantage on the rest of us. So I'm really excited for you to dig in with us. So John chapter six, verses one and two. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. So first, John gives us the setting. They're by the Sea of Galilee. Another name for it is the Sea of Tiberias. And then he tells us about this word, signs. Now, if you read John's whole account of Jesus's life, he's going to give us seven or eight signs, depending upon how you count. And we need to understand what John means by sign. It's not just a miraculous event. It's something that points to a greater thing. In other words, the focus is not the sign. The focus is what the sign is pointing to. Consider this. I know we're all stuck at home a lot right now, but think back four, six weeks ago, you're traveling, you're driving down the interstate, and you are hungry. So what are you going to do? You're going to look for signs, and you're going to look to see what you can eat on each exit. And do you remember the moment it happened? The moment that you saw the Chick-fil-A sign? Come on, somebody. If you were a Jesus follower, you might have broke out and way maker, promise keeper. I mean, let's go. If you don't follow Jesus, you're like, come on. Like, this is my moment. We're taking this exit no matter what. Because all you could think about 
All I could think about was a spicy chicken sandwich with waffle fries and Chick-fil-A sauce. And here's the point. We weren't excited about the sign. We were thrilled about the chicken sandwich. We just appreciated the sign because it pointed us to the spicy chicken sandwich. That's how John uses signs. We don't need to only see the sign. We need to see through the sign and move to something greater, typically in his book, someone greater, and his name is Jesus. So that understanding of signs, let's look at verse 3. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. If you know anything about Israel and Syria geography, it's very likely that Jesus is on the Golan Heights at this point, and he's probably just using the natural landscape as like a type of amphitheater and acoustics to be able to speak to the people. And then there's this detail that for us, it can look out of place, like why is this here? But for John's original audience, they would have leaned in, and that's what John wants to happen. He mentions Passover. He only mentions Passover five times in his whole book, and three of those times are all about one moment. So to get us all on the same page, just a, a little bit of context with Passover. It was a historical event, and what it represented was a time where God provided life to His people through the sacrificial death of a lamb, and then He provided bread for them in the wilderness that sustained their life. So it was a big deal for Jews, historical event. It became an annual festival, and we're going to return to it. But just make sure we know Passover is playing a big role here. So with that in mind, look at the first part of verse 5. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing. What do you see? This brings us back to that question. And so Jesus lifts up lifts up his eyes and he sees. In verse two, John mentions the crowd, Saul. So there's really three different groups and we wanna look at what did each group see? So for the crowd, they saw the signs. They were able to see the signs, Jesus was healing people. The question for the crowd is can they see through the sign and move to who Jesus really is? What did Jesus see? Jesus saw the large crowds and he saw people that had both physical and spiritual needs, and he saw an opportunity to serve their physical needs in a way that he could open their eyes to the fact that he could also satisfy their spiritual needs. And we will talk about the disciples and what they saw in just a moment. But let's continue in verses five and six. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So Jesus sees the large crowd, and he's going to test Philip. That word test here really means just to determine his true character. I really think Jesus wanted to know, Philip, what do you see? And Philip is a representative of the disciples, so as we know what Philip sees, we'll know what the disciples are seeing. And so verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. What did Philip see? Limitations. And can we blame him? Philip is in a situation that he didn't see coming. Like it's unforeseen. He's in basically a wilderness type area. And Jesus asked him to solve what looks like an impossible problem. Now to give Philip some credit, he uses some logic. Math teachers, you'll appreciate his math here. He says, look, we could work for eight months. 200 denarii represents eight months wages. He said, we could work for eight months and we could only give people a bite, maybe. I don't even think we could give everybody a bite with eight months wages. What he sees are limitations. Does that sound familiar? We are also in a time that most of us didn't see coming. And just like Philip, we can feel trapped by limitations. Every day, it seems like, some other freedom that we're used to is taken away. You got to stay at home. You got to be six feet away from people. You can't be in a restaurant. You can't go here. And, and at times, it feels like we're just being trapped and the limitations are closing in on us. I think we can definitely relate to Philip. And I hope that some of us can also relate to Andrew. Verse 8 says, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? 
I love the fact that Andrew made a relational connection. So one of the things that we believe is that true life change occurs through authentic relationships. And we see Andrew has gotten to know this little boy. <laughs> He's made a connection enough that he actually understands and knows what this little boy has. May we do that in this season. May we make those relational connections. Because here's what Andrew doesn't understand. He has no idea the impact of this trivial connection that he made with this little boy. And we hear it in Andrew's voice. He's, he's filled with doubt. He says, Jesus, here's what we got, but I mean, what good is that going to do? And again, let's not bash Andrew because I think all of us would have been filled with doubt in that situation. And I think in our situation, most of us have some level of doubt as well. So Andrew and the boy, they just bring what they have to Jesus. And verse 10 says, Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. One thing we miss in English is that that word sit down basically means to recline at the table. We may say this, take a seat and eat, pull up a chair to the table. So clearly Jesus is planning to feed people and the disciples are probably like, hold on, have them sit down to eat? Like, like what are you doing, Jesus? And keep in mind, 5,000 men, that's only men. There's also women and children. A lot of people estimate that there could be 20 thousand people here. Now you see their limitations. Now do you relate to Andrew and Philip even a little bit more? But notice what Jesus does. Jesus then took the loaves and when he'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish as much as they wanted. <laughs> and when they had eaten their fill, maybe we could say when they had experienced immeasurably more, when they were satisfied, not like stuff, like, oh, I'm miserable, but satisfied as in, man, that was delicious, and I ate what I wanted. When they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments, the abundance that nothing may be lost. Verse 13, so they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. Jesus provided so much that all the disciples got a take-home box. This is amazing. 20,000 people were satisfied and the disciples got to take something home for a midnight snack. <laughs> and then verse 14, when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. See, at this point, the crowds don't fully get who Jesus is, but they are beginning to see through the sign and to who he is. And the rest of the chapter, I highly encourage you to keep reading it is one big invitation to lean in, to learn more about Jesus, and ultimately to embrace the journey of following Jesus. And through this sign, through this miracle, what Jesus has done is he has expanded the disciples' vision and he wants to expand ours. Consider this statement. We see through limitations and move to breakthrough. <laughs> We see through limitations and move to breakthrough. In January, in our very first gathering, we introduced the idea of a see-through church, that we look beyond what everyone else is stuck on, and that is vital in this season. Jesus was able to see through limitations and move to breakthrough, feeding 5,000 people. Actually, 20,000 if you think about the women and children. And this miracle is simply a sign that leads us towards who he really is, that he is the God who is limitless. He has limitless power. He is the God of breakthrough. He is the God we can trust. He is the God who can take the absolute worst situation and still create some good from it. That does not mean that he takes away our pain, but it means he uses our pain. We see through limitations and move to breakthrough. And keep in mind the Passover the backdrop of this is the Passover, a time where God provided life to his people through the sacrificial death of a lamb, where he provided bread to sustain their life when they were in the wilderness. And this all points to Jesus' death on the cross, that Jesus gave his life so that we could find life. He died for us. And that Jesus, in this 
story. He gives them bread. But later on in this chapter, he calls himself the bread of life because he wants the crowd, the disciples, and us to understand that, yes, he can meet our physical needs, but Jesus is the only one who can satisfy our soul-level desires. But here's the thing about the day he died. We look back on it with joy, but that was not the viewpoint of his followers. When Jesus died, his followers thought it was over. Like his followers thought the Jesus movement and everything involving him was done until Jesus walked out of the grave. Here's what Jesus did. Jesus saw through the limitation of death and he moved to a breakthrough that we call the resurrection. And as he conquered death, he has the ability to now offer us life. So for those of you who don't follow Jesus, he offers life through his death on the cross, his resurrection, and he offers to begin satisfying our soul level desires through a relationship with him. So if you want to follow Jesus, just start talking to him. Tell him, Jesus, I know that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead. So would you please forgive me of my sins? And would you give me a relationship with you? I want the life that you offer. And if you do that, please reach out to us. Comment on this video. Send us a message on one of our social media accounts because we want to follow up with you and we want to surround you with community. It may be digital community for a season, but we still want to surround you with community and help you learn what it means to embrace the journey of following Jesus. See, Jesus ultimately broke through the power of death. And, and here's what this story teaches us as well that Jesus wants us to experience resurrection power and his breakthroughs in our everyday lives. And we know that from the details of this story. Because here's what this story teaches us. The breakthrough will not come until we take what's in our hands and we put it in Jesus' hands. This is exactly what Andrew and the little boy did. And look, what they had in their hands had to have felt insignificant. Andrew even asked, what can we do with this? And if we dig into the details, he didn't just have bread, he had barley bread. This is a poor person's bread. You had barley if you didn't have enough money to afford wheat. So even those around would have looked and go, you don't even have wheat bread, you just got barley. How could that really help? But when they took <laughs> what was in their hands and put it in Jesus' hands, breakthrough occurred. You know, the message paraphrases verse 9, to say that the little bit of bread and fish felt like just a drop in the bucket compared to 20,000 people. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like what you have to offer in this season is just a drop in the bucket in the midst of a global pandemic? Like, like what's one phone call really going to do? I, I'm, I can't even go to work to like physically influence people there. Like, what kind of an impact could I really make? There's people that turn on Instagram and 500 5,000 people are just there. What's my little post? What's my little encouragement? What's my little text or message going to do? Well, in our hands, it is a drop in the bucket. <laughs> but when we take what little we have and we place it in the hands of Jesus, breakthrough can happen. But we're never going to take what's in our hands and put it in His until Jesus gives us this type of vision. We see through limitations and move to breakthrough. So what we need to do is we need to pray in this season. Pray, Jesus, open my eyes. Don't let me just see what the crowd saw. Don't let me see the limitations the disciples saw. But Jesus, would you open my eyes so that like you, I can see through limitations and move to breakthrough. And here's what that could look like in our everyday lives. Limitations, my schedule is shot. Breakthrough. I now have more time to spend with my family than ever. Limitations. Restaurants are closing. How can I survive if Chick-fil-A closes? How can I survive if Dose Bro shuts down? Like, am I going to make it? Breakthrough. We can learn to cook. We can try new recipes. And trust me, most of our budgets are pretty excited about the fact that we may be eating in a little bit more. We think about limitations. I can't meet with someone in person. I, I talked to a mentor of mine this week and he said he woke up and realized, 
I can't have breakfast with anybody. I can't have lunch with anybody. I can't have coffee with anybody. Breakthrough. We can download Zoom and we can Zoom people. We can FaceTime people and have some interaction through that. You know, limitations. If we lean into limitations, we may have this mindset. You know what? I'm off work. So for five days a week, eight hours a day, I'm just going to binge watch Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu. But I'm just going to watch everything I can find. And that's a mindset of limitations. Here's a mindset of breakthrough saying, you know what? I am going to enjoy some shows, but I'm also going to spend more time with Jesus than I ever have before. I'm going to spend more time in the word. I'm going to pray more than ever have. That's the ability to see through limitations and move to breakthrough. One of the limitations that I'm facing is I can't go to the campus and work. We're filming this on Friday, March 20th. I've not been in my office since March 5th. We're following CDC recommendations, so I can't go there. That's a limitation. You know what breakthrough looks like though? As I set up shop in my bedroom, which is now my office as well, yesterday I had the opportunity to walk outside onto my deck during lunch and have a picnic lunch with Whitney and our boys, Liam and Oliver. And the reality is, and I need to grow in this, but I wouldn't leave the office to come back and do that. I need to grow, I need to get better, I get that. But I can walk out of my office slash bedroom right onto the deck and have an awesome lunch outside with my family. We see through limitations and move to breakthrough. But remember, we can't see everything that's visible. So we need to pray and ask Jesus to open our eyes, to give us his vision during this time. You know, Thursday was Whitney's and my ninth anniversary. Honestly, the best nine years of my life. I absolutely love being married to Whitney. And it's been a new season with us, learning how to parent together. We were talking on Thursday and I, we love that part and the challenges that come with it of just being a team and working together to learn how to raise our boys. And the thing is about our anniversary is it was different this year. And we even had a few friends say, man, you'll never forget this one. And Whitney and I talked about it and we're like, we won't because of the season we're in. But the reality for all of us is that we're never going to forget this chapter of our lives. And when we look back, there's going to be a title to this chapter. And part of the title is predetermined, COVID-19 colon. (laughs) The second part of the title will be determined by how we respond. So will the title of this chapter in our lives be COVID-19, Trapped by Limitations? Or will the title be COVID-19, Season of Breakthrough? I'm going to pray for us that we would experience the breakthrough that Jesus offers us. So Jesus, it's so easy to feel like what we have in our hands is simply just a drop in the bucket. It's insignificant. But I pray that you would open our eyes that you would remove the trap of limitations and help us to move to breakthrough and just to simply take whatever is in our hands, whatever you've put there for this day, for this moment, and that we would just put it into your hands so that you can do immeasurably more. We love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray.